Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch, and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Picking up where I left off last week with this large painting. And um, if you missed last week's video, I'll put a card in up top. You can go check it out and then come back and finish watching part two here. Hi all, I have brought the old slash new camera over and I'm going to test it out today. So um, I'll show you what it is first. And then if you could guys could let me know if any of you watch these videos like on a bigger screen TV or a bigger screen computer, how is the video quality on that camera? I don't have a big screen to watch it on. So I'm hoping that um, maybe one of you will let me know and I'm hoping that it's going to be of decent quality. I'll try to insert like just a comment or not a comment, but I'll try to put on the video itself when I'm recording on this camera. I'm not gonna be doing any time lapses on this camera because um, it doesn't allow for that. So, and the video quality, I do know the recording quality is going to be a lower grade than this quality. I'm just not sure if um, anybody's gonna be able to tell or not tell. And if you can tell if it's super annoying or not. So again, I'm just trying to get a couple different camera shots, a couple different angles of painting. Uh, but if it's not worth the um, effort or the different video styles, because the video quality is no good, then, you know, I won't record on that anymore. But I thought I have it, so I'm going to try it. So anyways, I'm going to stop rambling, set this camera up, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. The um, colors on here don't have any of the blues in it. So I need to find a blue that is going to work or that I think will work with this uh, color palette and be comparable to kind of the blues in here that I've already used because I like how those blues look on here. And that is actually what I'm going to be starting with. A lot of the background areas in this painting I'm going to start with those and then I don't know how far I'll get today. Maybe I'll get to some of the greens. I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. I have all of my encaustic paint swatched out on these pieces of molding. And this happens to be screen molding that Matt has chopped up for me in about six inch lengths. We've drilled holes through and I have them on this chain. And that's how I kind of keep all my colors categorized and in order. And then in these plastic bins, I have the colors sorted by color family. So um, just a little inside scoop on my organization process. I should also mention that I keep all of my paints labeled or labels rather. And so I know the names of each of the paints and I keep them in these little plastic bags. So up next, I'm just going to be swatching a couple of paint colors out on that colored swatch sheet that you saw me referencing earlier in this video. And I'm mixing some clear encaustic medium in with these. And then I'm also mixing the colored, the different colors of paints together to see what unique colors I can come up with. So just a brief explanation of what's going on here. All right, I think I have this narrowed down. I'm basically gonna be using three colors for the initial background, and then I might go in with some other gray tones, but I think probably what I'll do is um, just stick you up on time-lapse while I paint this, and uh, we'll go from there. So, hope you enjoy this quick little time-lapse.
I'm not sure if any of you have noticed here, but I've switched out from my larger torch that I was using in the previous video, last week's video, switch it out to the smaller torch. And that's because I'm working in smaller sections and I'm not heating the entire painting. So a lot of times I just use that big torch for when I'm putting down the first few layers or several layers of the clear and caustic medium. So if you don't have a big torch and you want to paint big, you don't have to run out and buy the big torch, I guess is what I'm saying here. Okay, this is very much of a hot mess. <laughs> so don't judge it by this first layer of a color because it is definitely not good. But I'm backing into a ladder <laughs> too. At any rate, um, I think this is where I'm going to call it today. There's never any good spot for that step ladder, which is what I use to reach the camera when it's sitting way up top here. But at any rate, that's what I was backing into. I think I'm going to leave you here for today. And for you guys, I will just be a few seconds, but um, I'm going to pick you guys up. It's actually a Friday, so sometime probably next week, I will pick you back up, hoping to get this painting finished in a week, week and a half's time. So um, stay tuned for that. And um, if it's Friday for you, I hope you enjoy your weekend. Good morning. Back in the studio to work on that large painting sitting back there. And I think my plan for the day is I have my two griddles heating up with the wax on it. And my plan is to just block in some color on the tree chunks on this painting. So let me flip the camera around and I'll kind of show you what I'm thinking about doing. All right, here's the original sketch. So we want to block in like these larger tree chunks and some of these smaller ones even in the foreground there or far background rather. And I'm debating about keeping them rather of a smooth texture somewhat looks like on this painting and then having the green be really textured the leaves and the yellows um, greens and yellows and so i'm debating on that or or using the encaustic wax writer like i did on these tree chunks and just adding in a lot more texture to the trunks this was that big painting that I finished a bit ago. So I think what I'm gonna start doing is just putting down some color and not with the encaustic writer, just with um, encaustic paint brushes. Because I'm gonna need a base layer of color down anyways prior to using that encaustic writer, at least that's what I'm thinking. And then once I get that base layer down, maybe I'll go in and add some greens at another date. Um, today I have a really short amount of time in the studio, so I'm just hoping to get some base layers down on these tree trunks. How many times can I say base layers? <laughs> Anyways, let's get to painting. Okay, one more thought. Um, I'm gonna mix this flamingo pink with this brown color to create some interesting tree backgrounds. And then also some of these trees have some blue along these edges, which is why I'm gonna have both griddles going. So this griddle was had all the blue paint on it from painting the these blues in the background here. So I'm going to use that still for the blues. And then this griddle over here, which is nicely cleaned off except for some white encaustic paint, I'm going to put the browns and the pinks down on there and mix those colors on that griddle. I'm also hoping I have enough encaustic brown paint because um, this is the last of it. And um, if not, I can mix them up. I have the pigment to do so, but I'm just hoping this will last. I don't have to mix anything up for this painting session. Okay, I've once again changed my mind. <laughs> and just so you are keeping up with my ever-changing mind, I've decided there's a lot of gray in this background area, which I like, and a little less bright blue. So I think I'm going to take like a mid-tone kind of grayish, warm grayish kind of color and knock some of that back first. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's a little bit better. And while I was doing the blue, or the rather, the gray up top in the sky blue area, I also put some down below, maybe in more of a wooded dirt area. Um, just, you know, spreading the gray throughout the painting. Who knows if it'll get all covered up or not, but, um, you know, that's kind of the beauty of the layering process. So now I'm ready to block in the trees. I'll probably just stick you on time lapse for that. Also, if you have any questions about this process, definitely let me know down there below in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything that I can. This little tiny piece here is the last tiny bit of brown. So I think I have about 10 minutes-ish or so. Hopefully it'll give me enough time to mix up some of this. But I think I'm going to mix up this and then I'll probably just let you go here for the day. Got, like I said, an appointment coming here. And then um, some other stuff I have going on this afternoon, so I have to get to that. But um, I'm going to mix up some brown paint so that tomorrow I'm hoping I can spend the majority of the day over here because um, this painting still looks a bit like a hot mess. So <laughs> it's getting there. Um, anyways, uh, let's mix up some paint. And like I said, I'll pick you guys up tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> I realized I left you rather abruptly yesterday. And that is because um, the appointment showed up here early that we had. So um, I had to quickly just shut the griddles down and go meet with them. And I never actually came back in. So at any rate, I now have the griddles turned back on. The brown paint that I was making is made. I actually did end up getting that stirred up enough and poured into the silicone mold. So that is done. Um, let me just flip the camera around and show you the state of the studio. And today, I think my plan is probably to get some greens down on this background. So we'll see how that goes. And you may be wondering why I didn't put the pine trees in right here that are on this sketch. These three pine trees here. I didn't add in when I added the rest of the trees in and that is because I kind of want them to be a little bit of a focal point. So I think that's going to be one of the very last layers just to, if you're having question about why I <laughs> didn't include these with the rest of the trees, they're coming. Just think I'm going to put that on the very last layers. I've got a little bit of a plan in mind, if you will. All right, I think I have most of the greens out that I'm planning on using along with the yellow, pink, and brown. And I also got out a small square of clear encaustic medium. I make these up when I'm making up the big blocks of encaustic medium. And that way, when I'm mixing colors and have two of the griddles on, I don't always have to heat up my big pan of encaustic medium. That kind of just saves that from, you know, staying hot all the time and having to keep reheat it and reheat it and reheat it because sometimes that's not always the best thing for the wax. So I have these little um, clear encaustic medium mini <laughs> squares and I can just put those on the griddle just like I melt the regular encaustic paint on the griddle and add the medium in to the paint that way because I know I've said this before, but as a reminder, especially the store-bought manufactured encaustic paints they go a long ways and you can add a lot of clear encaustic medium to them without having to dilute them too much and um, you know just helps one save you money on the encaustic paint and doesn't waste encaustic paint as well so tips first by stacy here today <laughs> anyways now let's get to painting also, I'm going to apologize right now for the shadows that are probably going to be happening today. It is bright and sunny and beautiful out, 
but again my skylights in here which let in a ton of natural light kind of great for painting might not be so great for casting shadows for filming so I may eventually make some sort of curtains with like eye hooks up there to just be able to get up on, on a ladder and shut them off when I'm filming. I don't know, um, but that is not happening anytime soon. So I hope the shadows aren't gonna be too distracting. I'll try to get a couple different camera angles where it's not full of shadows. So, but apologies in advance. It has been several days since I've been in the studio and if you hear that creaking and cracking, we've got the wax turned on. I need to work on some 100 day stuff today and I also realized that I have not kind of filled you in on the rest of this background for the big painting. So um, several days ago now, I almost a week ago not quite a week ago I did a few more layers on this background and I decided that some of the gray was too gray up in the sky area where I covered up some blue and so I scraped a lot of that back and then I added in what they call a tinting medium it's not like a white white or a bright white or as opaque as a white it's just kind of a subtle not as clear as the encaustic medium, but kind of just gives it a little bit of a foggy look, which was the look I was going for. So um, just thought I'd fill you in kind of on what I did there. And here's what that's called again. It's Tinting Wax Medium. It's by Encausticos. And I have it in a pretty big box, but I think they also just sell it in these little individual kind of wax cakes. So here is what that overall painting looks like. I still have a lot to do on this pathway over here, but I'm happier with how some of the blues and I knocked back some of the greens as well. I'm a little bit happier with how all of that looks. And just so the video doesn't get too, too long for this particular painting session, I think I'm gonna leave you here with this one. Hope you enjoyed coming along. I hope you got a few more insights on my process and how I lay down um, the next kind of layers. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. It truly, truly does help me out. Stay tuned for the next painting session in this series. As I'm hoping to finish this painting, I'm gonna be adding in 
probably quite a bit of details next, so stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so very, 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 very much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.